In today's video, we're gonna cover four tips to get over being camera shy. But before going into those tips, I wanna talk first about my story and how I used to be a very shy individual before I was putting myself out there and in front of the camera. So getting into it, guys, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. Growing up, I had no siblings. I was a very shy person. And literally in high school, I remember I had very few friends and I was so motivated to pretty much get out of there as quick as I could. So I literally graduated high school early. Again, in high school, I was very timid, anxious. Um, I wasn't that social, I was literally antisocial. And all those things just led me to wanna to get out of there quick and that's what I did. But fast forward to recent years, I started selling products online a few years ago. And when I did that, I was having a little bit of success making around, you know, 4K to 8K it'd fluctuate, you know, 4K, 6K, 4K, 5K, 8K, 4K. And I was figuring out, hey, how, how can I get, you know, how can I do more than that? And so I realized that I can't do everything by myself. And if I want to grow, I should start learning from other people that have, that are already doing bigger and better things than me in the same space. So that's what I did. I partnered up with some other e-commerce sellers. They were already having experience and success also with social media and doing marketing through social media. So once I started hanging around these guys, I saw how they were killing it. And that really motivated me to start exposing myself more to putting myself out there and also making content. And I remember when COVID happened, you know, we went through the epidemic, we had a lockdown and I figured, you know, what do I have to lose? Literally the world's shut down. Right now I can just learn and grow and kill it right now in e-commerce because everybody's shopping online. And that's what we did. Started on Instagram first. I went from posting, you know, one to two pictures a month to posting one to two videos a month, small. And as I started out, I stayed consistent. I kept making content and I progressed. I got better, I got more familiar with the gear, the equipment, how to use it, you know, how to plan and put in forethought into making strategic content and also making it visually pleasing and entertaining. And then also I got more familiar with the process. You know, you plan, you shoot, you edit, you post, you grow, you, know, you repeat that process over and over. And as I did those things throughout 2020, they reached a point to where the business was killing it and I was getting the information out there very fast in a very attractive way where people wanted to watch the content. And that led to more revenue coming into my businesses. And I remember there came a time at point where I had months where I was literally making, you know, as much as 50K a month. And it was just crazy because I used to have a goal of where I wanted to make about 20K in a month. And I just remember like that being unfathomable to ever think of and then literally shattering that and doing that consistently um, yeah my, my literally uh, I truly now have a mindset of abundance where I used to have a mindset of scarcity so the key point I'm trying to take away is I used to be a very shy individual that wouldn't put myself out there on camera now I'm the opposite I put myself out there on camera and now I make I do a lot better now than I used to before I was on camera so I went from making, you know, four to eight, seven K a month to now having months of, you know, literally doing 50 K plus a month. So if I had to give you guys some tips on how to start out and avoid being camera shy and how to give yourself the best chance to succeeding on your journey of making content and taking that to wherever you want to go, or it may be, these are the four tips I would give you. All right. First tip I'm going to cover is I'm going to cover the topic of perfectionism. Now, guys, if you're recently inspired or motivated person that wants to create content and you're waiting for that magic moment you're waiting for all the stars to align to give you that secret sign or message that hey now's your time to do this i hate to break it to you but that moment's never going to come the moment to start is literally now when it comes to perfectionism you just got to let that stuff go nothing has to be perfect it just has to be good enough i'm gonna say that again nothing has to be perfect it just has to be good enough Getting started and making progress is more important than doing nothing. The sooner you start publishing content, the sooner you're going to learn what you're good at and what you're bad at. And you're going to learn what you need to work on. This is going to allow you to grow, which is what's important. Now, when you start making content, whether it be five videos a month, 10 videos a month, 20 videos a month, you're going to establish a workflow. And as you keep making more content, paths are going to cross from where you're making content at scale and you're making high valuable content because it's hard to do both of those things. But when you get to that point, 
you're going to want to focus on a process for creating content at scale. And a few entrepreneurs have done that in modern day, you know, over the past couple of years. These guys are Gary V, Alex Formosi, Grant Cardone. All these guys are successful content creators because they've been making content that is good enough at scale because it's much more practical to try to create a hundred good enough videos versus a hundred perfect videos. You don't have to have the perfect equipment, the most expensive equipment. All you need to do, for example, on YouTube, when viewers come to this, when viewers come to YouTube, they want one of two things. They want either to be entertained or they want to receive value to help them solve a problem. Now, if you can do one of those two things or both, and deliver it in a clear and concise message to your audience over your specific niche, that's all you need to succeed. Sure, it's gonna take some time. You know, on YouTube, for example, you may not get to 100,000 subscribers your first year or even second year, but there's literally a clear path and formula for success. And I guarantee you that if you have in mind that perfectionism is involved, it's not. You you literally just have to get started. Tip two, be true to yourself. Don't try to be someone else. So it's okay to be inspired by someone else to get started making content, but don't try to be that person. What I mean is if you get inspired, say for example, from a bodybuilder influencer, but you're not an expert on weightlifting or you don't even work out yourself, don't go and start making content over bodybuilding and expect to have success or expect to get momentum. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. Start making content over a topic you have 100 plus hours of experience with and that you're familiar with. You know, if you don't have 100 plus hours of experience with anything, then find a few things you're passionate about and start researching. 100 hours is literally nothing. You know, if we put it into perspective, there's 24 hours in a day, let's say five hours a day you can contribute. That means literally in 20 days, bam, you're, you've done you've been able to do 100 hours of research within 20 days. Now, just be yourself. I recommend getting started with covering a topic that you're passionate and enthusiastic about or knowledgeable about. Because doing this, you're going to give yourself the best chance of getting off to a good start. You know, people are creatures of emotion and they wanna feel that passion, they wanna feel that excitement. So be true to yourself. Tip three, be consistent. Now guys, when you start, be okay with starting at zero because most likely you're going to be starting at zero and your content from the jump is not going to be doing that great. But it's important again just to start and understand the first year you're going to be finding your voice. You're figuring out how you communicate. You're figuring out how to learn, how to teach, how to entertain, how to speak. You're figuring out all these things. So give yourself one solid year before giving up. You can only lose if you quit. Most people only lose because they quit. Most people are not where they want to be in life because they're not willing to do things repeatedly. You know, I know it's not going to be easy to do these things that are uncomfortable, like getting in front of a camera, but that's the only way you're going to grow, guys. You don't want to be average Joe that gets to being 40 or 50 years old and look back on life and realize, damn, I was just literally, I wasn't able to accomplish to do this because I was literally just too shy or insecure to get in front of a camera. I was worried about what other people are going to think. Guys, screw all that stuff. It doesn't matter. Most people have the attention span of a goldfish. Even if they see something that it catches their attention, they're quick to forget about it five seconds later. So no one really cares where you're going, what's going on with you. Most people are so self-obsessed or insecure, worrying about what you know other people are going to think about themselves, let alone worrying about your stuff. Yeah, so get past that. Don't get obsessed with the outcome, get obsessed with the process. Guys, I see you do this a lot. I've done it myself in my early 20s. So a lot of us, we get shiny object syndrome. You know, for example, I'll give YouTube since I've used them in this video. So some of you guys will see a successful YouTuber, someone that has, you know, million plus subscribers. You see them living this extravagant lifestyle. You see them doing these things that they look very passionate and that they're happy to do. You see them with this notoriety and this fame in the viewer's eyes. And you think, oh gosh, it'd be so awesome, you know, to be him or be her. So you start your journey, you know, on YouTube, you start making content and you realize on that road that it is a real grind and that the process is 
a very long road in order to get the outcome, you know, to get to say a million subscribers. And then you ultimately quit pretty quick. What happens is you learn that you weren't excited about the process or you're not willing to do the process to get to the outcome. And on YouTube, the process is gonna be giving value, be being entertaining, helping people solve problems or giving them the value they need to solve problems. That's the process. So if you get obsessed with the process and you do that, you give value, you're gonna get views, you're gonna get subscribers, you keep doing it, you get to a million followers. You know, for some people that could take a couple of years, some people it could take five years, but you gotta be obsessed with the process and not the outcome. Tip four, set reasonable goals. So you wanna set small short-term goals that are achievable. You know, things like making a post a day, reaching out, engaging with your audience daily, collaborating with another creator once a month. These are all reasonable goals. You're gonna make things a lot easier for yourself if you set short-term goals and hit them consistently because in your eyes, you're gonna be successful and you're hitting these goals. You're gonna be more motivated, enthusiastic, and excited. You know, I'll give you an example of a reasonable goal. A reasonable goal, let's say for YouTube, you're starting out, you wanna hit a thousand subscribers within say six months. You know, that's very achievable. Now, an unreasonable goal, say you wanna hit a hundred thousand subscribers in your first year. Be it that it's not impossible, it is very difficult. And if you set that as your goal, end of your first year, let's say you get a thousand subscribers. Well, when you look back and measure your success, you're going to feel like an absolute failure because you've only achieved 1% of your goal versus if you set your goal at six months to do a thousand subscribers and you hit it, you would be like, I hit my goal. Okay. Let me set the, let me set the, let me set the standards a little bit higher. And now I want to hit, you know, 5,000 subscribers in the next six months too. That's a lot more reasonable. So if you're starting out, set reasonable goals. These are all the things I would focus on as a new content creator. If I could go back and tell myself, hey, Marcelo, you should focus on these things. And the reason why is because the sooner you see success, the more likely you're going to continue that process and continue to get better, especially if it's something you want to do. So if you're feeling shy, Again, don't worry about what other people think. Just get started. You've literally got nothing to lose. We live in such a huge world where I promise you, you know, if you put some content out there and you're literally, your one or two videos, no one's gonna care about it. Like literally, unless it's something um, super, super, super crazy. Um, yeah, odds are no one's gonna notice it. So yeah, just get started, perfect your craft, get a process down, learn and grow. That's what it's about. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give me a like and a subscribe. I always forget to ask this in the beginning of the video, but I'll put some notations, you know, some pop-ups. If you have any questions in regards to anything about making content, and also if you have any ideas on any topics you think would be interesting to cover, anything making content related, I will make a video about it. All right, thanks guys.